Hello again, this is Thomas from Hotkey404 and today we start another mini-series on 3CX. In a previous one I showed you how to install the software on various operating systems and today we will do a firewall configuration. And maybe you're thinking that this is a bit strange that 3CX requires a proper firewall configuration to work. However, if you have ever used some asterisk-based software like FreePBX and after installation you faced some issues with one-way audio, media update control, or some disconnects after 30 seconds after unsuccessful reinvite, then the idea of having the proper configuration at the very beginning is not so stupid. So today I will show you how to do a port forwarding, how to disable SIP ALG, and how to enable static one-to-one -one NAT in FortiGate device. Then we'll do the same in some other routers. So let's get started. At the very beginning, I just want to say that although we are talking about 3CX here, you can easily apply the same rules to some VoIP devices or, for example, some asterisk based servers. But going back to our 3CX, you'll notice that without a proper port forwarding, you won't be able to even access the link from your congratulations screen. So instead of using that, I will just switch to local IP address and access it internally. So after we log into our 3CX, you'll notice that there is an exclamation mark and this red dot and a warning next to your firewall because 3CX requires a proper firewall to work. So as you can see, if we run the test, uh, we can see that some of those ports are not forwarded. So I will just stop here and we will jump to our FortiGate device to set up those port forwardings. Now, after logging into our FortiGate device, we will do exactly the same things that are described on our hotkey404.com website, where in addition to FortiGate settings, you will find all those ports that need to be forwarded. As you see, the configuration is pretty empty. We have just one IP4 policy to enable outgoing traffic. So let's jump to policy and objects, objects, virtual IPs, and set the first one. As a name, let's say 3CX HTTP, external IP address, your public IP address, mapped IP, your local address, and we will start with TCP 5001, because this is the port for our web server. And we will do exactly the same thing for all of the services. Remembering that, for example, for SIP transport, for 3CX tunnel protocol, we need to add both UDP and TCP. And for media transport, we will add not one port, but a range of ports. So let's quickly add all of those required port forwardings. Having all of those, we can go to policy IP4 and create a new incoming policy. But I just want to highlight that since we are opening the ports to the world, in addition to using this 1-1 uh, incoming interface, I strongly suggest restricting incoming traffic. For example, use uh, geolocalization to restrict from just a specific country or use uh, FQDN to allow just 3CX just to make your services a bit more secure. But for now, we will just stick to all, uh, set outgoing interface to LAN and add all of those virtual IPs that we have created. Then uh, schedule always, service all, and we can disable NAT services because we have that set up inside our virtual IPs. So now when we jump to our 3CX and we go to firewall and run it once again, you'll notice that some of the services are okay. For example, tunneling proxy, media server, but still we have some issues with our firewall. And like we said, 3CX requires firewall to pass all the tests. So we see that the next step is disabling SIP ALG. Honestly, in my lifetime, I've seen just one scenario during which I have my SIP ALG turned on. In most cases, you turn it off. So going back to our FortiGate device, we will use CLI console to disable SIP ALG. 
Here we'll execute config system session helper and with show we will find entry number 13 which points to SIP traffic and we'll delete it with delete 13 and then end to leave session helper settings. Next we'll execute config system settings and here set default VoIP AOG mode and from proxy based we will switch to kernel helper based. Then, although it is not necessary at this point, just to be certain, we will set SIP helper disable, set SIP not trace disable, and end these settings. And the last one, if you want to use VoIP profiles, we will go to config VoIP profile, edit the default one, config SIP, and set status to disable. And then end, end, end. And to apply all those changes, we could clear the sessions, but I would just reboot my FortiGate device. After the reboot, if we go back to our 3CX, once again run firewall check, you will see that all of the tests are passed, so at this point you can easily use all the features of your 3CX server. And one last thing, unfortunately setting the incoming traffic redirection does not guarantee that our server will answer queries with the same port, especially if you have more than one public IP address. This firewall checker can show some port mismatch, so to solve this, I will quickly show you how to add one-to-one -one static NAT in FortiGate. To set this up, we'll go to once again policy and objects, objects, addresses, and we'll create a new address. We can name it as a 3CX and add local IP address. Then as an interface we will use LAN, show in address list and submit this. As a second step we will go to IP pools, create new, uh, add a name which will be recognizable so I will use one and my IP address and then as a type we will set one to one and as an IP we will set our public IP address and disable ARP reply. So there's just one last step for today. We'll go to policy IP4, set an incoming interface as LAN. Our source address will be this newly created 3CX. As an outgoing interface, we'll use one. Destination all, schedule always, service all. And inside firewall settings, we will use dynamic IP pool and select the one that we have just created. And the last thing here is to adjust a correct order of our policies. To make sure that we haven't messed things up, we we'll once again run a firewall check. As you see, everything is still nicely working and we can finally use the link from the very beginning of this video and from local IP address, we can finally use this fully qualified domain name from our 3CX domain. Great, so as you can see, adjusting FortiGate to fit 3CX needs is not so difficult. But if you're thinking that you have a different version of the software, something older, something newer, then Google is your friend. Today I showed you just the general idea on how to configure all those settings. And of course, like we said at the beginning, in the next videos I will show you how to do the same on different devices. So for now, thank you for watching, have an amazing day and see you in the next one.